الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فإن المرأة خلعت من ضلع وإن أعود شيء في الضلع أعلاه فإن ذهبت تقيمه كسرته أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام <clears throat> Last week I mentioned that inshallah I will be uh, relating the topic or regarding the respect and the rights of the wife through a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam This hadith which I have just uh, read, it has great wisdom within it. And it's very important that we understand this hadith and the meaning of the hadith, what Rasulullah is explaining to us. And the reality is that if the husbands were able to understand the depth of this saying of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that could be the life-changing, a turning point within the families, and specifically in those relationships or between the husband and wife where there is problems and difficulties, endless problems, endless difficulties. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith has gave an excellent example and a comparison. Such a comparison, such a comparison which cannot be found anywhere else. Rasulullah says that women are created from a rib, gala, rib, pasli, Urdu is called pasli, a rib. Some commentators, the Muhaddisin, have interpreted this hadith in the sense of saying that because after creating Hazrat Adam alayhi salam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then created Hazrat Hawa alayhi salam from the rib of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam some commentators and some muhaddisin have interpreted this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam and given a deeper meaning towards it. That Rasulullah has compared the women folk with the rib because of its delicacy and its crookedness. A rib is very fragile, it's very delicate, and it is bent. It's, it's bent, it's not straight bone. And the beauty of the rib lies in its crookedness. If a rib was to be straight, it would lose its beauty. Pasli ka husan or pasli ki khubsurti uske tede pan hai. If you were to straighten that and somebody says, you know, this, you know, this bone should be straight. If you straighten the bone, the beauty of the structure of the human body will finish. It's gone. So 
So the deeper meaning is that these women folk have been created from rib. And they bear some qualities of a rib in their delicacy, in their crookedness, and the beauty in them lies in that crookedness and that delicacy, in that fragileness. That's their beauty. Sometimes we men, or generally the male, they might have a conversation between them in a straightforward manner. But the same conversation when goes into the women folk, or the female section, it sometimes gets really complicated. That's the beauty of that. That sphere of that section of humanity. That's the beauty. And if somebody says, no, she should be thinking the way I think. She should always be on the same page as I am. You can't. Because she's been created in a different manner. Mart or Aurat ki khilqat or pedaish mein naturally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ne difference of fark rakha hai. And that's going to stay there forever. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says <clears throat> in another hadith, this hadith been explained with the other uh, with the other um, uh, uh, meanings. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says وَإِنَّ أَعْوَجَ شَيْنْ فِي الضَّلَعِ أَعْلَى In the rib, the most crooked part of the rib is the upper part. The upper rib is the most crooked, most bent. And فَإِنْ زَحَبْتَ تُقِيمُ كَسَرْتَهُ And if you try to straighten her, you will break her. And in another hadith, the meaning of kasarta, who breaking, the breaking it, has been interpreted by at-talaq. Straightening her means that it will end us in a form of a divorce, in the form of a talaq. <coughs> In my small part of my life's experience, I have come across so many cases where it's ended up in a divorce. The relationship has ended up in a divorce. Not because something major has happened. Minor, petty things have led to a relationship ending up in a divorce. And then culturally, it's not the couple who's divorced. There's a, a huge split between the families. And if they, uh, both families are outside families, then obviously they might not ever see each other again. But if they are close families, you can see the disaster that happens. You know, we've seen people that, you know, even people have then passed away from the families from one side to the other side. And still these families have not been able to get together. And what happened? Because these two petty reasons, lack of education, not understanding the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu in regards to the marriage, not understanding the Quran, it all comes down to lack of knowledge. Somebody told me, a scholar told me that in Malaysia, when 
a couple intend to get married or the families intend to get two people together and have them married together. The masjids over there or the scholars or the learned people have devised a course, a short course, which is a separate course for the bride and it's a separate course for the groom. I don't know what the duration of the course is, maybe some weeks or I don't know, might be weeks or maybe a couple of months or so. And it is compulsory within the system of Islamic system of the all the masjids unity that both the bride and the groom must go through the go through this course and pass the course and obtain the certificate. Once they've obtained the certificate that they've done this course, only then any masjid or any madrasa or any scholar will perform the nikah. You have to show the certificate. Course here? Okay, that's okay. That's signed by a, a, a valid masjid or an institution. It's okay, that's fine. Now you can perform the nikah. And in that course, I've tried to get hold of the course, but I haven't been, been successful in that. In that course, the bride is then educated and shown what the, what the objectives are of a marriage. Chadi ka maksad kya hai? Husband ki respect kya hai? In-laws ki respect kya hai? Brother-in-law, who is brother-in-law? How is he related to you? You know, scenarios different scenarios, what would happen and what could go wrong. Then they, I think they, they, they are educated about the masa, talaq, masail. Sometimes talaq happens, people don't know their masla. They don't know the ruling. I've come across my experience, I just earlier said, a sister approached me and she explained everything to me. And According to Sherry ruling, she had been divorced 10 years ago. And three children are born after that. It's a long story. But actually, she had a dream. Somebody in a dream said to her, you're living a haram relationship. And then she approached somebody, some other scholar and he gave my number. She approached me and... Then we interviewed her and asked her what happened happened. And actually the divorce had happened long many ten years ago. And because the husband was so ignorant, he, he swept it under the carpet, brushed it under the carpet. Things like that. Because he knew the consequences. But Alhamdulillah, this, mashallah, Mumina, this believer of Allah, this lady, then she went through all the, you know, what the problems she had to face. It's, it was very difficult for her. But she and the, as she said, if I want to live a halal life, I don't want to live in haram. What's the point of getting marriage is for living halal life. And this is a haram, what's the point of me living like this? She st Allah gave a steadfastness and she stood up for the Shari Basma. That's not my point. My point is that, you know, this is all lack of education. Brothers here, some responsible brothers were saying that we want to have this kind of, some kind of a educational um, you know, system in place where we can educate our brothers and sisters, you know, from our community here in Sheffield and maybe use the Makki Masjid as, as a place where as a means that we can educate people and go into more details. You have been listening to my lectures since now, maybe it's been like maybe two months now I've been going on and on. I'm still hasn't finished. I can still go on. I intend to come to a conclusion today. Uh, but, you know, this is in the pipeline that we can have these kind of educational tutorials or educational 
uh, you know, pre presentations where we can all get together and, you know, talk about these things and everybody gets the chance to, you know, discuss. Obviously, we can't discuss here because it's one person giving a lecture and so everybody listens. This is in Jumabaya. But besides this lecture, we can have something educational for our, uh, for our youngsters, for our elder, for our sisters, our mothers. It, this, is, this relates to everybody. You know, there's people here who've been married for maybe 30, 40 years or 50 years. There's people who have been just married recently. There's people who are still not married. But these things are beneficial and useful for everybody. Even if you, you know, had 20 years down the marriage, you, must, you might be a very successful person. You can maybe give some kind of experience to other people and give some good advice. So this can be an educational discussion based tutorial or educational based kind of a discussion for everybody. So if this was to be, is that something a good suggestion? Any opinions here? Any advice? Uh, any suggestions? Well, um, yes, sir, you will mention to the husband. Anybody else? Urdu be bolo. Punjabi be bolo. Apni is baalat bolo. Koi. You will try that. There's no doubt about it that it is beneficial. There's so many things. Even if we were to discuss the masail and the rulings of the talaq, you, know, you will discover that there's so many things that we did not know about talaq. So many details. So, you know, a bit two days ago, brother was, uh, Ajisab was recommending that, you know, we, we listen to talks, we listen to lectures. You know, we need some education. What the Quran says, what the Hadith say, what the Shari rulings are. Unless we don't educate ourselves, a person gives a lecture here, you'll, you'll listen to lectures, I might not be here with somebody else, and many before, before me have gone and come and gone. You know, lectures are lectures. You listen to uh, some lectures, you may, ben may have benefited. I'm not saying nobody benefited. I'm not that we have benefited. This is why we're here. But education and to learn something is different to a lecture. So this is in the pipeline. We are still thinking, we do want your suggestion. Because if I am here and two other people are here and nobody is here, there's, it, that's not a beneficial thing to start off. We want to start something off which is then decided by the community. And everybody feels the need that you know, this is needed and we need to do this. There is a suggestion box there. If people you know, are shy not to speak in front of everybody, you might have something completely new suggestion which, you know, that we can always have a read on what somebody is doing. You can write in English, you can write in English. You can privately come and talk to us. You don't have to speak here. You can privately come and make a suggestion. Say, yes, you know, today's lecture, what you said, we agree, we don't agree. Or is something else that we it's required in the community? There's many issues. This is just one issue I'm just discussing with you. It could be drugs issues. It could be you know anger issues. There could be other issues. There's so many issues going on. But these issues need to be discussed from the masjid. Masjid is the place where these issues should be tackled. And these are the issues where the guidance should be provided through the Quran and Hadith. Through the Quran and Hadith. And preferably in English. And if somebody doesn't totally understand English, we can always give them advice and talk to them in Urdu as well. That's not a problem. 
So this is the hadith, alhamdulillah, which gives us a lot of uh, understanding and detail uh, of one, how should one conduct uh, in the manner. Because they say the understanding is different between male and female. That's the That's the understanding. So everything is not totally good and everything is totally not bad and not evil. It's a mixture. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the mixture. Some qualities, some people are good and some qualities are bad. <coughs> So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us ability and tawfiq that we understand our deen, try to understand the Qur'an, try to understand the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that will inshallah bring peace, that will inshallah bring tranquility in our lives and the lives of many in truth. Who, who come in contact with us on a daily basis. And foremost is first is our family. Our family, our children, our our you know blood relations. These are the people who benefit. And then many other people who come come in contact with us.